Or Demacia. If you want to learn how to build great web APIs, then stay tuned. Hey guys, and welcome back to a new episode of Building Great Web APIs. So in the last video, we went deeper into the thing of routing inside the Slim app and we did some configuration. We exported our routes into this separate file you can see in the background and we imported that file in our index.php. This reorganized our code and made it a lot easier to maintain our project. Everyone who takes a look at our project will see in seconds the routes I need to configure to make those paths work. Later, more and more files will reside in that folder as we need to configure more and more in our app. You also learned how to group routes and specify different arguments, also called placeholders. Then we extracted those arguments from the route path and using like invel or any other function which parses to a specific type to ensure the correct type. And we also used regular expressions to make sure that it's the correct route and not something like this crap over here. But wait, before we start, here's the thing in my own matter. For the horde. For Demacia. Well, actually, it's obviously for the algorithm. If you enjoy my content and it provides any value to you, I would really appreciate it if you smash that like button, hit subscribe and activate this bell. Thanks. So with a fresh style online, let's start with a new lesson. This time we will start talking about a concept called middlewares. So in total, the basic concept of a middleware or multiple layers of middlewares is basically to manipulate an incoming request or the outgoing response. And as you can see in the background, this can consist of multiple layers. It's like that because you can actually have multiple middlewares, one for example for the authentication process, the other one for authorization, which is a different step. Another one like body parsing means incoming JSON values or form requests, etc. So there are middlewares or multiple mid middlewares can exist to do different jobs and you basically just stack them like you can imagine on an onion, for example. So I think one of the easiest ways to explain a middleware in its total basics is to actually get that example for like an authentication. If you authenticate one user or if you want to, then you would normally do it like in a middleware or in a centralized concept and not going like for any route. You repeat your code, you repeat the implementation or anything like that. You specify, specify one central thing and this is like here. A request comes in at the start point, travels through the second middleware in this case and the second middleware can like now say, okay, I can see that incoming request, which headers are provided and so on. And if there's like an authentication header, I'll check that. I'll look up that user in the database or in the case of a JSON web token, I'll just check if it's correct, etc. And then the middleware can decide whether this request travels more to the inside of the app or it gets denied, for example, and uh, HTTP code like 403 forbidden is returned or not authenticated like 401, etc. So one basic thing you have to keep in mind that HTTP itself is stateless. That means you're basically just requesting something. Some kind of server will process that request in any way, like, for, like with middlewares, etc the basic code and then you get back a response. That means you don't have to like any connection between the first, the second and any subsequential request. So there is no state. You can imagine like a C Sharp application or a Visual Basic application has a current state which is stored inside the RAM, but this doesn't count like in that way for PHP or HTTP applications in general. So this already explained kind of the how of a middleware, but now we will see how we can actually define a middleware and use it inside our app. Keep in mind, as I already said, 
that the definition order of middleware is also pretty important. The easiest way to define our first middleware is to use a closure function. But first, let's go ahead and create a separate file for that, as we already discussed on using separate files to organize your code better and to make your project a lot easier to maintain. So create a new file inside the config folder called middlewares.php. Then you go ahead and add a new line inside your index.php to use that file right now. To not having your time wasted, I will just copy a few lines of our already existing routes.php, but I would really encourage you to start writing and not only copying the code, because then you will actually get that like muscle memory for creating such things. It's one of those developer traps we always face. You go ahead, learn something, you copy this, and after that you are like, oh yeah, I got it, I got it, no problem. And then when you first need to write it yourself, you are there like, oh damn, how, how, how was it again? So really go ahead and write it yourself. So in the background, we got that basic skeleton we need to register our middlewares. You can see we just imported some basic classes and interfaces, at least one. So now we can actually start registering middlewares in our app. To register a middleware in our app globally, this is important, we use that instance method called add. The middleware itself is a closure function, like I've already said, which looks like this. Now we have to first declare the request which comes in, then we have to declare this request handler, which is mostly called just handler, and now we can start using things on the request or like generating a new response etc. But first we have to import that request handler class over here. So let's go ahead and do this, which looks like this one here. If you can't find the imports, you can also use the auto import function of Visual Studio Code, at least if you set up the project like I've showed you in one of the first tutorials. So when you're typing, you can choose off from this list here and make sure you choose PSR HTTP server request handler interface. Just double click it or press enter and it should be imported just like that. And now let's create a very easy middleware, which takes a token from the request URL and process it in any way. Like if it's not a specific token, then deny that request and send back a specific response. To get a specific parameter from the request, you can do it like this. Use token, so define a new variable, use the request object, which is obviously the request, and then you can use get query params. So if you might not know this function, you can just press F12 in Visual Studio Code. And if you set up everything I explained, like in the first videos, you can press F12 and then like search for param, parameters, params, etc. And you will quickly find this method we used over here. So get query params returns every query parameter. And obviously you can also use that suggestion functionality here in Visual Studio Code. So if I just enter like params, I will see different functions and go ahead and use the one I need. So in this case, we're using get query params. As this function retrieves every single get parameter from the URL in an associative array, we can now go ahead and use it like this, but I wouldn't recommend that as we most likely will get an error when this token named get parameter is not available. So we will kind of adjust that code to like this one here. So just go ahead, define a new variable called parents, pull every parameter, get parameter from the URL, and then we can like check if token is available and so on, which we will cover now. As I'm a big fan of using early returns instead of nesting ifs, etc., I will show this now. So when array key exists. If the parameter called token exists inside our params array, sorry, my hands are like frozen. So 
typing is hard. <laughs> so if this is not the case, if this token doesn't exist in our params array, we will create a new response, new response, our own one, and import that. Slim PSR7 respawns. Yeah, it's okay. So import. And we will return this response instead of letting the chain continue. So now we can actually continue and like output a status of 403 or 401. One is unauthenticated and 403 is forbidden. Choose as you wish. And then you can say like token equals params i mean we already wrote that above so let's go ahead and take this and now if the request is valid then we can continue like checking is this token actually some valid token in our database etc so but for now and don't use that in production i will just go ahead and say like valid token is this one one two three four five like this and then we can say if the provided token isn't equal to the valid one then we can also like use a custom response like 403 forbidden the above would i think make more sense like 401 as we are not authenticated at the first point maybe actually it's a bad request because um this was a request which expected a token parameter to be set but it wasn't so it's a bad not valid request so we could actually say 400 and in the next step we could say like 403 which is forbidden and if everything is okay then we can continue like it would normally go like we can let the handler handle our request and return that response instead of our own one. If we now want to test this new middleware, we can do it like so. Go ahead and start the PHP local server by using this command. And I need to say sorry because at this point in the last video, I did some little mistake. Actually, the definition has to look like this. Wait a second. So we're going to import this interface here. And now we need this definition over here because we don't register the sub route on the parent app instance. We register that route on the group object or more or less the interface of it. So yeah, sorry for that. But now let's continue. Then to continue, we can go ahead and fix something else as well. So returning a response here so that at least a response comes back but to test our middleware we can now do something like this i just hold my control key down click this one here then it will open the window for me instead of that i need to do it we have this localhost thing here so now we can actually go ahead and confirm this response in a more detailed way so press f12 in your browser press Control r to like refresh so this request spawns up here and we can click it and as we see there's a 200 okay response even though we defined 403 why is that so this is one common caveat you can encounter when using this over here wrong and this is basically because the response object is immutable which means you can't like modify it and each call to like with status etc will generate a new instance from the old one but with new data so in this case we're actually doing something like this we are creating a new response using this function here which will return a new response but we don't store this response or use it like anywhere it's get most something like dropped and then we return the above response to actually fix that problem we can do something like this so we say the response is the return value of the with status call and now it will work because we are returning actually that response we have intended to return so i'm going to delete this above here as an example and adjust it at the bottom line here and if you are wanting like not to repeat yourself every time like this here create a new response from with the status etc and going like 
with header and keeping that repetition you should avoid every time because we are programmers so avoid repetition you can use method chaining so it goes like this return the response created from the return value of with status and from the return value of with header and use like content type and the content type for this response could be application json so now you've seen how you can avoid repeating yourself and not falling into that problem or this trap with different response instances so now let's fix this thing over here and do some more stuff. So in this case, I'm creating the response by using the with status method. Um, and in this case, I want to write some things to the body like get body and write so that we have an actual output. So I'm going to say access denied and this would be it i do the same for the thing below but i won't repeat myself by writing all this by hand and now let's see what it looks like so refresh and we have this little ss denied thing and we also have now our correct forbidden status code my general advice here is look for the return type of the different functions for example with status actually means return a new response with that status that means in this current context not returning in general like this statement here so it means basically from a response use this function to return a new response with that status but in this case down here this is some kind of different so we are getting the body of this response and we we are writing to that body this doesn't mean get a new response instance so keep that in mind when searching for any errors or problems let's have one last look at our middleware when we specify the correct token so i'm gonna specify that token here with one two three four five press enter and we get a successful response so boom but how can I use this middleware only for a specific route group or even a specific route, you may ask now. So this is no problem at all. Just go to routes.php where we defined our routes and you can go like to this group definition and append or method chain another call to add and say like new my middleware etc so you would add this middleware to this specific group or you can even go ahead and say for example for the post route here that you want to add a middleware to this specific route so this is no problem at all at the end of this video let's do a quick recap what we've learned we talked about this thing called middlewares. It's a concept of an application structure or design where you get requests in and send responses out. And those middlewares can manipulate or change the behavior of those incoming requests and the outgoing responses. This is often used for like authorization or authentication at first for logging and many other different use cases. Keep in mind that the order of the definition of the middlewares take a big point in structuring your application, as you might want to first authenticate and then authorize a user and not vice versa. Another nice thing is that you can specify middlewares not only on the global app, so to say, but also on little routes or route groups. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, maybe consider subscribing and I will see you in the next episode. Bye bye.